what is love? It isn't a noun. Love is not a thing. You don't possess love. You don't keep love in a jar on your shelf so when people come over, you can pull it down and say, look, this is my love. Isn't it pretty? No, love is a verb. Amen. Well, hey, good morning. Uh, we are so glad that you're here. If you're new with us today, I just want to let you know today is kind of a different day for us. Uh, today, as Mike said, is our anniversary Sunday. So it's a little bit different than normal uh, for us. We really believe it's important. Um, we live in a culture that doesn't take a lot of time to stop and reflect back on what God has done and also take time to kind of think through what's important and where are we going you know we just kind of keep moving in this culture and so we like to use this week uh just to do that so if you're new with us promise this is a little bit different than normal uh, but we still want you to feel welcome and we're glad that you're here i hope you won't leave here today without talking to someone visiting us in the welcome booth um saying hi um but we're going to talk today about the vision of MVF Church and and some of the things God has been doing. We'll look back at the past, but also kind of give you guys some things to be hoping for and thinking about and praying about for the future. Um, now, I, I'm well aware today is 9-11, um, and uh, we know the importance of that day as well. Um, and in just a moment, I'm going to take a minute and pray, and we'll, we'll take a moment to just remember those who lost their lives um, on this day. Um, but, you know, I also think it's appropriate for us in that to remember that God's Word does tell us that everything in this world passes away. Some of it, hope, most we hope for peacefully, but it's also very clear that not all of it is peaceful. And um, yet he endures forever. And we're going to be looking at that today. So while we take time to remember, I think it's also very appropriate for us to take time to focus on what is truly eternal. So let's pray, and then I'm going to jump in. Heavenly Father, we just want to start by just taking a moment, um, a moment to remember um, those who lost their lives on 9-11 um, on that tragic day to remember the families of those that move on who hopefully are able to find peace and, and able to continue forward with their lives and their families um, and God hopefully even ultimately more, most importantly that they find hope in you God, we thank you for brave men and women who risked their lives on that day and the, the days to follow. And we just want to spend a moment, God, in, in silence just thinking and praying for those, those people. And God, as we, as we look at today and we look at your word um, and what John shared with us, um, Lord, we just pray that um, we would be able to see, God, that you have plans for the future and that you have a direction and desire for us to focus on not the things that are temporal, not the things of this world, but the things that don't pass away. God, to focus and abide in you. And we just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to encourage you to open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, verses 2-17. through 17. If you've been with us, you know we're going through a series in John. And as this series, this, oftentimes on Anniversary Sunday, I won't preach out of the passages that we're uh, going through. Um, but today it just felt very appropriate. Um, th this passage really much, very much deals with uh, what I hope we can understand and look to uh, as a church as we continue to move forward. I, I have to say, watching that video uh, reminded me to be very thankful today and blessed because if you were with us anniversary Sunday, that reminded me I wasn't able to preach last year. I had lost my voice and Dana filled in for me at the last second. Um, and so uh, thankful for Dana <laughs> for doing that, but also thankful that I have my voice today. Um, some of you are like, well, we wish Dana was back, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> so, hey, um, but uh, 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 through 
through 17. Let's look at what John says here. He says, I'm not, I am writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his namesake. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I'm writing to you, children, because you know the father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Verse 15, he says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but it is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. Now, on, on a lot of Sundays, I would spend a little more time in these first three verses, but for today, um, because we have so much with Vision Sunday, we're just going to kind of jump to the meat of the passage in verse 15 through 17. But verse 12 through 14 is basically John encouraging all ages within the congregation. Um, you know, remember, they have just gone through a split, basically. Um, they have people... Uh, you know, just really kind of standing against them, and they, they, needed, they need some encouragement. And so John is encouraging everyone to stay strong in the faith through a difficult time. So if you're, one of the, if you're filling out your notes, um, that first note is just inc an encouragement to all the ages. So that's what John is doing there. Um, but I want to spend most of our time in 15 through 17. Let's look at verse 15 through 16. He says, don't love the world. Do not love the world. And I, I wouldn't kind of just summarize that as our, in our um, notes as don't love the things that pass. Don't love the things that pass. And he's going to spend some time talking about what those things are that pass. And man, I don't know about you, but for me, in the last few years, this has really hit home. That everything passes. Everything has a time, a season. Everything um, becomes dust at some point. Everything ceases to exist, whether it be governments, whether it be certain nations, whether it be smaller things, all, all the way down to the very temporal that we buy at stores. But I've become increasingly disillusioned over the last few years um, with political real, uh, leaders, realizing that they really don't have any answers. And, and I see that um, as I look at that level of society, and then I look at where our um, financial world is going and the cost of everything is increasing. And I, you have to kind of sit and wonder, what's it coming to for our next generations? And I think, man, John's words are so wise here. Because I, I, I have to think, and if I really evaluate the last few decades of society, I feel like my generation, maybe a little bit above my generation, down into pretty much right now, if we really look at it, if we're really honest, the truth is we put so much stock into our short material life here. And we put so much effort into building our little personal kingdoms. And we put so much importance into this country. You know, like, like that somehow America is, is the end all of, of all countries, of all things that have ever been. And, and I think it's, we're in a time where it's, been, it's pretty disillusioning. You know, I mean, I, I was, I've definitely raised and still am a very patriotic person. And, you know, I, I do believe that we have a great country. I love our country. But the more I dig into God's word and the more I see some of the things that are happening, the more I realize eh, there's a good chance our country isn't going to be around as long as God, <laughs> right? In fact, it isn't. 
But I think kind of in my back of my brain, I kind of was raised and, and it kind of carried that into my adult life like, you know, I mean, right, right? I mean, God and country, that's my family's kind of like motto. They're, they're kind of equal. But, but God's word endures forever. And I don't know about you, but it's so easy to get caught up and distracted by the things of this world, isn't it? He, so John tells us not to love the world. When he, that word love, is, it's a form of agape. It's not the actual word agape, but it's a form of agape. That, so it, it's basically saying to, to hold with the greatest regard. He's saying don't hold the things of this world with a great regard. So he's not saying you can't like it, right? He's not saying you can't enjoy a steak. He's not saying you can't like your home. He's not saying you, you can't find laughter and, and find joy and, fun and have fun in things. But he's saying don't hold it in a high regard because it all passes. And he, he says we're not to hold things in high regard. And then he goes on in verse 16 and he says, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, the pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. The desires of the eyes, I'm sorry, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. These are all focused on fading things in this world. I don't know about you, but all three of those get a hold of me sometimes, right? My flesh desires a lot, whether it be gluttony or materialism or certain vices, you name it. In my life, I've fallen for it. I, I, I have let, let it get in the way of my pursuit of the things of God. My eyes Right? The desires of my eyes find me chasing after things constantly that I don't need. Things that, I, that honestly aren't even good for me. Things that are temporal. Things that leave me empty. And then, of course, there's the pride of life. Right? The pride that looks to build my little personal kingdom rather than invest in God's kingdom. I find myself caring about my promotion, my name, or my reputation when it's really only God's that matters. And I know I'm not alone in this struggle because I've had countless conversations with people over the years that are in this struggle. Now, I'm not talking about people that just give up on it. You know, there are those that, have just, that say, I'm, I don't care about anything. I am going to go after my kingdom. I am going to chase after whatever I want. And they're, they're perfectly content at this stage in their life to, to just be uh, distracted by those things. And, you know, hope they're just trying to put off ever having to think about the eternal. But I, I'm talking about those of us who would say, man, I seek to follow God. I want to know God. I desire him. I desire the world to know him. I desire personal friends and family members to know him. We, we get caught up in this battle. And it's this daily fight, this daily reminder to seek after the things of God. See, every day I believe that you and I need to wake up and we need to make a decision about who it is that we serve, who it is that we follow, what it is that we really want in this life, what is our purpose, who it is we believe, what is important. Because you know what happens? If we don't live day to day seeking to live in the spirit of God, then this world and the enemy who guides it grabs our hearts and seeks to pull us and distract us with the temporal things that not only leave us empty, but offer no hope to the rest of the world. And so today, as we celebrate our anniversary, I can't help but think about things that I'm so grateful for. Because in the midst of that struggle, in the midst of that battle that that. I fight and I know you guys fight and those that have been with MVF Church for years have fought. 
In the midst of that, God has still prevailed. God has still done his work. God has still found glory. And, and we have seen awesome things happen, even in the midst of these battles that we fight. And I am so thankful that God called me here 14 years ago. You know, before I came here, I, I served in ministry um, for about that long uh, before I came to Heber. But the importance of the eternal had never been more clear in my eyes than it had been, has been since I moved to Heber. Um, I, 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 I would say I got caught up in more what oftentimes pastors and sometimes in the Christian world will refer to as churchianity. I got caught very up much into churchianity or playing church. This idea that, oh, you know, just keep the church going and keep people happy in the church and, you know, and, and you know, preach things that everyone likes to hear to, that everybody, you know, that, that Christians will keep coming and, you know, a lot of just what pastors call sheep shifting, you know, just, you know, if someone gets upset at that church, they go to your church and vice, you know, blah, 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 blah sheep shifting, right? So, <clears throat> um, they, and, and I got caught up into that because there was very much, quite frankly, the culture, at least in the area of the state that I served in. But never before had the importance of the eternal become so obvious as it has been since I've lived here in Heber. I remember a couple years after moving here, um, and I would get together with ministry friends from other states, and they would ask me about certain things going on within the Christian community, uh, not in Utah, just worldwide, Christian resources that were being put out, campaigns that churches were doing, Christian movies that were out. And I realized after a couple years, I'm like, I don't know about those things. Yeah, you know, I used to always know about them, but I moved to Utah, and all of a sudden, I, and, and I kind of didn't think about it, but I'm like, yeah, no, that, that doesn't get talked about, and I finally kind of had to tell some of my, and it was like, and it, it was almost like I didn't even realize it until I, until I started talking about it, that I'm like, no, pretty much if there's something Christian that happens in our town, we do it. <laughs> right? If there's something that is, 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 is going to promote the gospel, we do it. Like, we don't even get advertising for things. And this is before the internet was gotten so good at reading and understanding every little thing you look at. And so they, they do a better job now of, of spying on me and figuring out what I want to look at. But, um, but you know, so, so it, was, it was just pretty much this, this bubble that was very different than the rest of America. And the more I realized that, the more I saw the importance of the eternal here in Utah. You know, when I was doing ministry in other states, I would meet with 10 to 12 other pastors that were all at churches within 10 minutes of my church. Um, and all churches, I was like, that's an awesome church. I would love to go to that church. Like, that, they're, they've got great things going on there. God's, you know, all that kind of stuff. To meet with 10 pastors here in Utah, I have to drive to Salt Lake. And, and, that, and that's hard to do. It's, it's just not something that happens. I did ministry in the other areas I lived in. When I did ministry, there were 10 churches within 10 miles of me there were awesome churches that, were, that people were coming to Christ in, in that community. That's just not the case living in Utah. Some of you are kind of newer to Utah. You're, you're going to go through this culture shock um, in the next, maybe you have already. Maybe you're just now experiencing it. Just, just to kind of give you guys an idea, there. And, 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 I, and I say this not to toot our horn. I say this to help you see the need in this area. There are no more than 10 Christian churches in the whole state of Utah that have over 1,000 people that attend the church. Um, when I did ministry in other areas, I, I drove by almost that many churches to get to my church that had a church of that size. Um, there, there, are, there are no more than only, um, I'm sorry, 
There are less than 20 churches in the state of Utah that have an average attendance of over 500 people on a, on a given Sunday. And none of them are outside of the major cities of Utah. None of them are outside of the area that kind of is next to the 15 interstate. They have over 500 people on a given, on a given Sunday. This, this, Utah is the smallest percentage of people attending a Christian church in the whole country. But things are changing. God is moving in Utah. And MVF is poised to be used by God in big ways as we head in to 2023. So the question that we all have to ask ourselves as Christ followers is will we, will we be focused on the eternal as we move forward? Or are we going to be distracted by the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life? Because those things, in my estimation, are not worthy of my time, energy, and resources. Only the eternal is. So John says after this, after he, he, he talks about this, that, there, that there's so much that it's temporal that we get distracted by, and that it's all going to pass. He moves from that into saying that the world is passing away, verse 17, along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. And I think that's why it's so important for us to ask this question. Are we going to focus on what abides forever? Are we going to invest in the temporal or are we going to invest in forever? Let me read that one more time. And the world is passing away. <laughs> Bruce, I'm sorry to interrupt this. Would you mind finding out what they're pounding out there? And they're putting up a bounty house. Okay, well, that's cool. They're putting up a bounty house for the kids. All right. I just thought some kid was pounding a rock right outside the door there. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, focus. It's for the vision. All right, moving on. Okay. All right. The word, let me read the verse one more time. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. And I'm going to stop right there because this is actually a great point. This bouncy house. No, seriously, I'm, I'm on point here. Stay with me. This bouncy house is fun. But we don't do it because it's fun. We do it because we want our kids to love going to church and we want our kids to tell their friends that they love being a part of a church uh, I was just talking to my kids about this this week you know my kids all, all raised in this church my kids love church and I, I, can, I can challenge you call a lot of pastors and ask them how much their kids love church some of them don't love church so much but one of the reasons they do is because MVF has always put an emphasis, one, on kids and making sure that kids have an awesome time as much as we possibly can while they're here. But two, not just on kids, on fun. We, we believe, I, I don't know about you, but it's really hard for people to get me excited about boring, lame things. I just, I don't, I'm, I'm just not that guy. But people, People like fun. So it's funny because I'm watching this video, you know, and it's like pies in the face and, and you know, games and that kind of thing. And I'm like, I, I even thought for a second, I'm like, well, is that like, okay, is that the vision that we're just, no, that's not the vision. But the vision is that we're reaching people, we're sharing the gospel with them. And in doing that, we, we get them laughing. We have fun with people because we wholeheartedly believe that we need to invest in the forever. So the question is, do we all believe this? Do we all wholeheartedly believe that we need to invest in forever? 
If we do, it should severely affect how we spend our resources, our time, our finances, our energy. It should have a huge impact on it. You know, some of you, you've been with us from the very beginning. Others, you've been with us for a few years, and some of you have only been a part of MVF ministry, church ministry, for a year or year and a half or so. Some of you have given your life to Christ here at MVF. Many of you are baptized here. I believe however long you've been a part of MVF, though, and however, whatever season that is going to be, God has you here for a purpose, and there is a contribution that you can make that no one else can make. And they were all called as a family, as a body of Christ that gathers together to make that contribution. This isn't a place that we're all just called to come and sit and hear some things and maybe worship a little bit and, and then just kind of go on with a life. That we're called to come together for the purpose of sending out and doing ministry together. Third, 14 years ago, I couldn't remember if it was 13. <laughs> well, 14 years ago, um, we started this congregation as an official congregation on the second Sunday of September. We had our first service in a bed and breakfast up on the north end of town. Over, after a little over a year, we, we moved to our place on Main Street in the Clock Tower building, and that served us so well. Um, many of you came and started becoming a part of MVF during that time. In those years, we grew. We saw the youth ministry grow. We started our outreach into the community. We developed children's ministries even stronger. Um, and we saw people make decisions for Christ. And in 2014, we found this property. And uh, it's a long story, so I'm not even going to get into it, but it was a, I, I truly believe it was an act of God that we found this property and for the price that we got it and everything involved with that. Um, there, were, there were many th great things about this property, as well as some things that were not so great. Those of you that were with us back when it, we didn't have a parking lot and everything, and it felt like you were driving into some weird compound thing or something for, for a while um, right? um, the, so there were some things that were not so great and it took a lot of work from everyone to convert it but the thing I loved most about this property was that it was in the middle it was about as close to the middle of the Heber Valley as you could get and that represented something big to me it meant for the first time ever a Christian church in Heber had a sustainable property and building, not only around the town, but in the town for the first time ever. And since then, we have continued to build our children's ministry and youth ministries. We've continued to do outreach. We've continued to develop ministries for women and men and different age groups. Um, we've planted two other campuses in rural areas. Um, we've begun a missions partnership in Honduras, which, by the way, um, we have an interest meeting coming up in a couple weeks. If you're interested in going that, it'll be uh, on September 25th. The interest meeting will be... Um, uh, but we've, we've got, we got that ministry going and th th some big things are happening there. And we began dreaming and praying and planning for another step to be able to accommodate more ministry. And as we have always believed that there would come a day that this building would no longer accommodate our scope of ministry. And we reached that place about four years ago, we, there, was just, there was just no, we, we were busting at the seams. This, this building was holding w uh, over 300 people on every, any given Sunday. Our children's ministry was just insane. I, I just used to pray for the children's ministry people every day um, and thank God for them. Um, and, in our, and in that period of time, in those 12 years, or that we, or actually those 10 years, we baptized over 120 people into a new relationship with Jesus Christ. And that last, and that last year, before we started the building campaign, we saw almost 1,000 people attend our Easter service. And we did the campaign to raise the money for the new building. Then, COVID hit. Right? And MVF, along with most churches in America, suffered a really big blow. And it was a struggle. 
For a few months there, we weren't even able to meet in any kind of capacity. We finally, against the wishes of the county, decided that we would meet in the parking lot as a, and in, in cars and had services that way. Finally moved those to outside services. And it was an eight full months before we were able to have indoor services again. And even then, as with everything, it took time for people to get plugged back in, depending on their comfort and their health and other factors. In that time, we saw some of our close, um, some of our close church family choose not to come back. Many of them moved to other places. Some are still watching online or participating online, and some just did not come back at all. However, God has also brought us many new people as well. Some of you sitting here are those new people that have started attending MVF in the last year and a half or so. And I, we've been seeing God use you and work, you, work with you through you. It took even longer for us to get to a place where our groups could begin meeting and activities to begin. And over the last year, we built it back up. In July of 2020, the leadership made the decision to move forward with the building. We knew it would be scary and an uneasy time to take the step, but we also definitely felt a solid confirmation that God was calling us to take the step. That this, this world was not going to get any better or any easier. That building was not going to ever just start dropping down in cost. So we decided we needed to just start. And that now more than ever, God's, this world needed a church. This, this community needed the Christian church to have a strong presence. We knew it would be scary but we stepped forward. And building during COVID and a recession has definitely been an exercise in patience and in faith. Um, numbers have been moving targets and getting workers needed has been next to impossible at times. We knew within a couple months that original numbers would not be achievable. And over the last two years, we've seen our country go through some really crazy times. All you have to do is drive down Main Street and try to eat or go shopping and see that things are just crazy. Places, store hours just change all the time. Or, or they say, you know, we don't have workers for this aspect of our, of our business. We only have this aspect right now. Um, one of my guilty pleasures in this town is Beto's. Um, don't hold it against me if you don't like greasy Mexican food. Um, but um, I, it, I like Beto's every now and then. I, four years ago, I could get a Beto's burrito. I just found this because I don't go there very often anymore. Four years ago, I could get a Beto's burrito for six ninety nine. Moved up two years ago to eight fifty nine. My daughter, who was in town, um, really wanted to go there, so I said, yeah, go ahead and go, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll have one and bring it back. Brought it back, they, they're now $12 for a burrito. In, the, in, in four years, it went from $6.99 to $8.59 to $12 for a burrito. Their burritos aren't that good. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, our grocery bill has increased dramatically, almost doubled our grocery bill has. Um, gas. Right? We've all seen that, how much gas has gone up. Um, and because of that, I don't, want, I don't say all this stuff to, to scare you. I say it to encourage you and thank you for your faithfulness. In a world of upheaval, that you're a faithful congregation in your giving. And they, through that, ministry is able to keep moving forward. It's been a great blessing to see the faithfulness of MVF Church. Mike and our contractors have worked really hard to get multiple bids as well as updated bids over time um, as material prices change week to week in the last couple years. However, as much as everyone has worked to keep costs down, the costs have increased significantly. And we're continuing to look hard at things that should be cut or work that can be done ourselves, but the simple fact remains the cost is higher than originally anticipated. So in the next few weeks, we're going to work hard to get a very solid number on what, where we're at with the building and what it's going to be. However, we ask that you be praying in that time about a new pledge to get the building finished and to keep our loan manageable. Now, for some of you, 
I am. I'm asking for you to consider renewing your pledge. I know you gave very faithfully to get us to that point. But I'm asking you to consider and you pray about it. This is not a guilt thing. This is me just saying, please pray about it. You do what God calls you and tells you to do. For others, though, I'm also asking that you pray about committing a first-time pledge to your new, your new church home. That if this is the church that you're saying, yes, I want to call this my church home, have some ownership in the next step and next phase of the vision. And don't just go and, and experience it without having some ownership in it. And I'll just close with this. In a time when our world is being turned upside down, when we have seen that political leaders don't seem to have the answers to really fix things, in a time when our financial world is in turmoil, when our marriages and families are under attack like never before in our country, when de- it, in a time when depression and anxiety are out of control and our country is divided in ways that I have never seen, uh, in a time when people are scared about the future, I believe the church and the message we share is needed more than ever. I believe the presence of the church needs to be stronger than ever. And I believe now more than ever it's going to come down to what do his people believe? Do we believe that the things of this world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life are worthy of our time, energy, and resources. That they're worthy of our love. Or do we believe that our God, who endures forever, and his message of hope is worthy of it? The church needs to be focused on Jesus and sharing the good news of the gospel with a lost and dying world more than ever before. As we head into our next year as a church, I'm gonna ask that you commit to pray with me, asking God to unite us even stronger than ever with an intense focus on, of, on him and the hope that he brings to the world. And I'm gonna ask you to consider three key things. Number one, Make sure you are involved with a group of some kind. Make sure you're plugged into some level of encouragement and accountability in your walk with Jesus. In the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about groups and promoting them. And I want to encourage you to be in prayer about it this week. We're going to have them in in front of you so that you can know where and how you can connect. But make it a priority. We are not called to walk through this life alone. We are called to be in in accountability with others and to have guidance from other believers. This is not supposed to be the only way we meet as believers. So get involved. Second, I'm asking you to pray about committing to a building pledge. As we get into the final months of completion of the new building, and it's taken longer than we hoped, I I assure you we're working diligently to keep costs as low as possible in this ever-changing and financial environment. Not to mention that we've had a few big setbacks in some of the things that have happened. But in coming weeks, we're going to be giving you a full update on the building as far as the cost and scope of work and the hope of completion dates. But in the meantime, please be in prayer for us. This is going to be a massive tool for the ministry to come through MVF Church. If you're newer and you've never given to the building fund, please be praying about a sacrificial pledge to the building. And if you've already given, ask that you, we ask that you would see if God puts it on your heart to increase that gift. Finally, I want to ask you to strongly consider where has God called you to serve? Where has God uniquely gifted you that you can fill a void that no one else can fill? 
you might think, oh, it's inconsequential. It's not that big of a deal. Every gift to God is a big deal. Everything we do for God and his kingdom has impact. And we are not to judge how it's going to affect someone. Right now we have people running videos in the back to, to help us put sermons online. They'll never know how many people that affects that they do that. The people that push buttons on the videos and t screens and, and get that going, just, just keeping things moving like that, they'll never know who that affects by making it easier for them to focus and hear the gospel or, and see and, and keep watching and, and hearing. The people that serve coffee on Sunday mornings never know how much it helped to keep you awake and listen <laughs> and may hear what Jesus wanted you to hear some, on a given Sunday. We never know what it is. God's doing some big things at MVF, and I hope you're excited to be a part of it. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you have big things in store as you always have. God, I thank you in these 13, 14 years out here, God, that it has just been, there have been some of the scariest times in my life, some of the most difficult times, times that have driven me to my knees more than ever before. And I thank you for those times, God, because without those times, we wouldn't have the times of celebration, the times of, of great things, times of seeing you work, times of just learning to trust you in powerful ways. God, I thank you for every single person who in some way has contributed to getting MVF Church to the place that it's at right now. People that are no longer here, people that have moved, some who have passed, some who have been here with us for the whole time, faithfully serving and giving and, and, and just being available. God, some who have just gotten here, only been here for a while, and yet have, have started saying, hey, where, where can I play a role? Where can I be a part? Even if it's not verbally, they've just been asking you. God, I thank you for every little piece of the puzzle that you have orchestrated to bring us to this place. And God, we humbly submit every step forward from here on out into your hands. It's in Jesus' name, amen.